no, no, they're gonna, I mean the no, they're gonna get a place there. I know, pero kung iwanan nila si Anika. I have no idea what their plans are. Yep. The hey. video's on! Good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning! Are we all awake? No. <laughs> no. Okay, let's wake up. Today is Wednesday, January 10, 2018. Let us pray for some of those who have birthdays today. Okay? Uh, Jerry Dahl, my business partner, is celebrating his 79th birthday. Uh, Grandma Sarah, your Grandma Sarah is celebrating also, I don't know how many, but uh, it's also her birthday today. Huh? So let's, let's keep them in our prayers today. <coughs> Offer, um, offer the Mass for those who are celebrating their birthdays. Okay? And we might as well, speaking of offering the Mass, we might as well offer the Mass also for many of our friends who uh, are sick and are still uh, suffering from uh, all sorts of infirmities. Um, um, let's remember... Uh, you know, Grand Aunt Remedios from uh, the Philippines, Uncle Dan, um, Mrs. Gutierrez, um, who else um, that we are praying for? Um, yeah, so let's pray for uh, those who have uh, afflictions and uh, are sick of something. Okay, and well, today, today, speaking of prayer, today's today's gospel and the, the commentary is uh, very appropriate. So we have a story here of how Jesus, you know where he was yesterday? Uh, right? Capernaum, right? And then from there he goes to uh, the house of Simon's mother-in-law. Oh, yeah. See? So Simon, Simon's mother-in-law. So Simon Peter had a mother-in-law, <laughs> at least according to the story of the gospel, right? Which means that maybe at one point in time, um, Simon Peter was married. Okay? Uh, but at the time that uh, Jesus called him, there is no record of a wife. So it is probable that at one point Simon Peter was married, but then maybe the wife died. So uh, when Jesus called him, he was not married anymore, but he had a mother-in-law. So the mother-in-law was sick. And so Simon Peter went there with all of his disciples and uh, cured the mother-in-law. And from there also cured many other people that they brought to uh, the house of Simon Peter's mother-in-law. But then, and here's the narration which I want to uh, read from here on. Rising very early before dawn. So it looks like they stayed overnight. They slept over okay, at the house of... Uh, of uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law. So rising very early, okay, before dawn, the following day, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. So he left them. He left his disciples, he left the house, and went off on his own right, to a deserted place, to a place of quiet, to a place where it was peaceful. To a place where there was no crowds of people. Very early in the morning. See, so take note of all of these details that the gospel narrates. Because these are very nice and very important uh, um, details that have implications in our own life. Okay? Which we're going to comment on later. Okay, Simon and those who were with him pursued him. So maybe they woke up and said, hey, hey, where is Jesus? Where did he go? So they started pursuing him. Okay? They thought he got lost again. So they pursued him. And on finding him, ev they said, Everyone is looking for you. Everyone's looking for you. Where did you go? He told them, Let us go to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. So, beautiful narration of Jesus' uh, first days of uh, his 
um, ordinary life, right? We are in the season of ordinary life and we are now commemorating the, the things that Jesus did during his public life. So uh, a few things that are very nice uh, here to, to uh, understand is that every time that Jesus was going to do a major thing, any major activity that Jesus had, what was the first thing he did? He would pray. Right? He would pray. Every time there was a major thing, he would pray. So like this one, he was just beginning his, his public ministry, his public life. And what does he do? He goes off to the mountains to pray. Before he uh, performed the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves, what does he do? He goes off to the mountain to pray. Before he actually started his public life, what does he do? He goes to the desert for how many days? 40. 40 days. That is why there's where we get the 40 days of Lent. See? He went to the desert for 40 days to pray and mortify himself. Right? Before he suffered and died on the cross, what did he do? Pray. Where? In the Garden of Gethsemane. That's right. He prayed. So you see that our Lord punctuated every major activity of his life with prayer. Right? Every aspect of his mission, his mission in life, was all punctuated and began with prayer. And that is a very beautiful lesson for all of us. Right? If our Lord found it necessary to be praying all the time, and to be praying especially during those major events, then I'd like to think we can copy that. We have to also emulate that example of our Lord. And it is not only when there are important things. Okay? Because we can punctuate every activity of our day. We can start every activity of our day. We can fill our whole day with prayers. With prayers. Where does this whole uh, thing come from? Why, why, why is it important to be praying? Where does our Lord even uh, get this uh, maybe need? Uh, not like He needed anything, but it seems like he had a need to be praying every time there's this major thing that happens to him. Where do you think does that come from? Why is there such a compulsion to pray on the part of our Lord and also on our part? Where does that come from? Any guess? Huh? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. You know why? Because it is a human need to communicate. Okay? Communication is a human need. It is a very natural human inclination. And that has a very deep philosophical basis. You know, because men, men are created with intellect, intellect and yeah. will. And the intellect is made for? Thinking. Oh, thinking, but knowing, right? The first activity of the intellect is to know things, to know things. And every time the intellect tries to know things, it doesn't just stay there. Okay? It doesn't just stay there. It necessarily manifests itself with forms of expression. Okay? It comes out of you by necessity. It comes out of you uh as a as a as a part of your nature you don't just stock them all up there they always come out and they come out in what forms in forms of what in actions and in speech and in uh, any other form of communication known to man right from writing to music to uh, all of those things okay so uh, communication is a product of the intellectual nature of human beings. And that is why it is a need. There is a need to communicate. So communication is a human need. And our Lord is perfect God and perfect man. So he too had the need to communicate. Okay? Now, that's exactly what everybody does. Right? Especially when there's something important. Right? Husbands and wives, before they decide on anything major, they communicate, they talk. 
in a corporate or business environment before you decide to do anything like do we buy this machine do we invest in that product do we uh, hire this employee or do we fire this other employee whatever it is we're doing right uh, there's always a meeting right the boss will meet with his subordinates or whatever it is and they make a decision by having to meet and communicate and talk right you and I Parents and children do the same thing, right? Recently, we were just discussing about what courses you're going to take at the junior college. Well, we have to talk, right? Because that is a need that everybody um, has. There's always a need to communicate, 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 communicate. And not only when there are some major events, but we communicate even here at the dining table. We tell stories and we tell uh, what happens during the day and we ask questions, etc., etc. So people just cannot hold things to themselves all the time. They have a need to communicate. Now, now, if there's anybody, anybody at all that we need to communicate with, well, who do you think is the most important being or person who wants to hear all about us? And who wants to who wants to interact with us and who wants to get to know what's in our hearts and minds? Who would that be? God. God. Yeah, God. God who created us, God who made us, God who wants to always be with us, God who wants to direct our souls, God who wants who is waiting for us to go to heaven. Who can be more interested to communicate with us than God Himself? Right? So God wants to talk to us. And we have to want also to talk to God. Okay? And God is there, you know, all the time waiting and anticipating the, uh, for the time that we communicate with Him. And tell Him stories. And tell Him things about ourselves. And tell Him about our concerns. And tell Him about the decisions we want to make. And tell Him about uh, the dilemmas we have. And tell Him about our aches and pains. And our broken hearts. And, 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 and excitements. And joys. And whatever it is we want to tell Him. He's waiting for us to talk to Him. And that is where we get the whole idea of prayer. Eh? What is the definition of prayer again? Lifting up our hearts and minds to God. Okay, as the catechism has it, prayer is the lifting up of our hearts and minds to God, which is basically the definition of communication. Okay, that's what communication means, to express what's in your hearts and minds, but this time directed to God. Okay, that's what prayer is all about. So Jesus felt that need, and did so in order to show us the example of the need for prayer ourselves. So let us put that into practice. And, and how are we going to put that into practice? Okay, It's interesting how the gospel notes when Jesus prayed. Okay? It says, early before dawn. And he went to a secluded place. What does that tell you? That tells you that. Because we are human beings, we can forget about praying. And in order not to forget about praying, it is best to? Do it first thing. Well, do it first thing, yeah. But also, put it on a schedule. Put it on a schedule. Especially uh, those kinds of big prayers that we do, right? Or the major kinds of prayers that we do. Let's put it on a schedule. Because putting it on a schedule not only assures that we do it. But also assures that we, we put ourselves in the proper disposition to do it. Okay? That it just doesn't happen just because we feel like it. No, but we put ourselves in the presence of God. Which is the proper disposition. Look at what our Lord did. He even went away. See, he went away and did his prayer at a secluded place, in a deserted place, so he can concentrate, he can focus, and he can really communicate with our with God properly. It's the same thing that we do. Right? That is why all of our prayers are scheduled and they're put on a schedule, which we even print. From the morning prayer, which we talked about yesterday, by the way, okay, to the Mass, Right? So we go to Mass also at a very uh, specific time because the Mass is the most perfect prayer, the most complete prayer. And then the adoration, 
of the Blessed Sacrament. And then we have the Angelus. And then we have the Rosary. And then we have all the other prayers that we do all the way to the Act of Contrition and the three Hail Marys uh, before going to bed. All of those prayers are scheduled. We put them on a timeline. We put them on a calendar. We put them on a schedule so that we do not neglect that appointment with Jesus. The appointment to speak with our God. Because Jesus himself had that appointment early in the morning. And he did it in a specific proper place to pray that way. That is why the same thing that we do, right? We go to church for mass. We face uh, our icons when we pray like the angelus, right? Or even inside your room, you face an image of Our Lady to put yourselves in the proper disposition so that you don't get distracted. You're focused okay, on, on praying. Okay? So let us make the appointment for prayer. It's important to make the appointments for prayer. When you have a meeting at work, well, you set an appointment, right? Uh, professional people don't just say, hey, I want to talk to all of you. Come here right now. No, no, no. It doesn't happen. You know, sometimes it does. But normally, professionals, they would set a time and date for a meeting. Even couples have to sometimes set a date for them to go out and just be together so that they can talk in peace. Okay? And sometimes they have to talk and set a meeting date so they can talk about their household budgets. Right? Or even when you visit friends, it has to be on a schedule. Right? So uh, everything else that we do in life is scheduled. So why not the time for praying and the time for talking to God? There's nobody else more important to meet on a daily basis than God himself. So it just stands to logic that we schedule our prayers and speaking of schedule it is time to go so <laughs> we have to go to mass so we don't want to be late so we'll end it here and that's it for us folks remember to put your prayers on schedule bye okay? grandpa oh yeah grandpa's on the call <laughs> okay bye bye everybody have a good day see you next time bye, bye.